Lilliput and Blefuscu are two fictional island nations that appear in the first part of the 1726 novel Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. The two islands are neighbors in the South Indian Ocean, separated by a channel 800 yards wide. Both are inhabited by tiny people who were about one twelfth the height of ordinary human beings. Both kingdoms are empires, that is realms ruled by a self-styled emperor. The capital of Lilliput is Mildendo. Geography Swift gives the location of Lilliput and Bluffer School as latitude 38 degree 2 a euro squared s, to the northwest of Van Diemen's land. Because this area is actually occupied by Australia, and on the basis of other textual evidence, some have concluded that Swift intended to place Lilliput in the Pacific Ocean, to the northeast, not northwest, of Van Diemen's land. However, the map clearly places Lilliput in the Indian Ocean well to the west of Australia but still northwest of Tasmania. Lilliput is said to extend 5,000 plus drugs, or 12 miles in circumference. Bluffer School is located northeast of Lilliput, across an 800-yard channel. The only cities mentioned by Swift are Mildendo, the capital of Lilliput, and Bluffer School, capital of Bluffer School. A modernized Lilliput is the setting of a 1958 sequel children's novel, Castaways in Lilliput, by Henry Winterfeld. This book provides more geographical detail. Other cities, in addition to Mildendo, include Plips, Wigak, Tottenham, and Lundbeck. History and politics Lilliput is said to be ruled by an emperor, Gulbaste Omomorem of Lane Goodilo Chef in Mulyaligu. He is assisted by a first minister and several other officials, the Galbit or High Admiral, Skyresh Bulgolum, the Lord High Treasurer, Flimnap. The General, Limnock, the Chamberlain, Lelcom, and the Grand Justiciary, Balmoth. Bluffer School is also ruled by an emperor, who is not named. Both nations follow the teachings of a prophet, Lustrog, as recorded in their scripture, known as the Blundeckel. Sectarian divisions exist in the debate between Little Endians and Big Endians. Equals satirical interpretations equals, Lilliput and Bluffer School were intended as, and understood to be, satirical portraits of the Kingdom of Great Britain and the Kingdom of France, respectively, as they were in the early 18th century. Only the internal politics of Lilliput are described in detail. These are parodies of British politics, in which the great central issues of the day are belittled and reduced to unimportance. For instance, the two major political parties of the day were the Whigs and the Tories. The Tories are parodied as the Tremexen or High Heels, while the Whigs are represented as the Slamexen or Low Heels. These issues, generally considered to be of fundamental importance to the constitution of Great Britain, are reduced by Swift to a difference in fashions. The Emperor of Lilliput is described as a partisan of the Low Heels, just as King George I employed only Whigs in his administration. The Emperor's heir is described as having one of his heels higher than the other which describes the encouragement by the Prince of Wales of the political opposition during his father's life. Once he ascended the throne, however, George II was as staunch a favour of the Whigs as his father had been. The novel further describes an intra-Lilliputian quarrel over the practice of breaking eggs. Traditionally, Lilliputians broke boiled eggs on the larger end. A few generations ago, an emperor of Lilliput, the present emperor's great-grandfather, had decreed that all eggs be broken on the smaller end after his son cut himself breaking the egg on the larger end. The differences between Big Endians and Little Endians had given rise to six rebellions, wherein one emperor lost his life, and another his crown. The Lilliputian religion says an egg should be broken on the convenient end, which is now interpreted by the Lilliputians as the smaller end. The Big Endians gain favor in Bluffer School. The Big Endian Little Endian controversy reflects, in a much simplified form, British quarrels over religion. England had been, less than 200 years previously, a Catholic country. But a series of reforms beginning in the 1530s under King Henry VIII, Edward VI, and Queen Elizabeth I had converted most of the country to Protestantism, in the Episcopalian form of the Church of England. At the same time, Revolution and reform in Scotland had also converted that country to Presbyterian Protestantism, which led to fresh difficulties when England and Scotland were united under one ruler, 
James I religiously inspired revolts and rebellions followed, in which, indeed, one king, Charles I lost his life, and his son James II lost his crown and fled to France. Some of these conflicts were between Protestants and Catholics. Others were between different branches of Protestantism. Swift does not clearly distinguish between these different kinds of religious strife. Swift has his Lilliputian informant blame the civil commotions on the propaganda of the Emperor of Blefuscu, that is the King of France. This primarily reflects the encouragement given by King Louis XIV of France to James II in pursuit of his policies to advance the toleration of Catholicism in Great Britain. He adds that, when McQuelled, the exiles always fled for refuge to that empire. This partially reflects the exile of King Charles II on the continent from 1651 to 1660, but more particularly the exile of the Catholic King James II from 1688 to Euro 1701. James II was dead by the time Swift wrote Gulliver's Travels, but his heir James Francis Edward Stuart, also Catholic, maintained his pretensions to the British throne from a court in France until 1717, and both Jameses were regarded as a serious threat to the stability of the British monarchy until the end of the reign of George II. The court of the Pretender attracted those Jacobites, and their Tory sympathisers, whose political activity precluded them staying safely in Great Britain. Notable among them was Swift's friend, the Anglican Bishop of Rochester Francis Atterbury, who was exiled to France in 1722. Swift's Lilliputian claims that the machinations of big Indian exiles at the court of the Emperor of Blefuscu have brought about a continuous war between Lilliput and Blefuscu for six and thirty moons. This is an allusion to the wars fought under King William III and Queen Anne against France under Louis XIV, the War of the Grand Alliance, and the War of the Spanish Succession. In both cases, the claims of the exiled House of Stuart were marginal to other causes of war, but were an important propaganda point in Great Britain itself, as both James II and James Francis Edward were accused of allying with foreigners to force Catholicism on the British people. In the novel, Gulliver washes up on the shore of Lilliput and is captured by the inhabitants while asleep. He offers his services to the Emperor of Lilliput in his war against Blefuscu, and succeeds in capturing the Blefuscudian fleet. Despite a triumphant welcome, he soon finds himself at odds with the Emperor of Lilliput, as he declines to conquer the rest of Blefuscu for him and to force the Blefuscudians to adopt Little Endianism. Gulliver's position reflects the decision of the Tory government to withdraw from the War of the Spanish Succession. Britain's allies considered the important objects of the war to have been met, and that the larger claims which the Whigs claimed were excessive. The withdrawal was seen by the Whigs as a betrayal of British interests. Swift is here engaged in an apology. Gulliver is, after further adventures, condemned as a traitor by the Council of Lilliput, and condemned to be blinded. He escapes his punishment by fleeing to Blufferskull. This condemnation parallels the issue to the chief ministers of the Tory government that had made peace with France, Robert Harley, 1st Earl of Oxford and Mortimer, who was impeached and imprisoned in the Tower of London from 1715 to 1717, and Henry St. John, 1st Viscount Bolingbroke, who, after his political fall, received vague threats of capital punishment and fled to France in 1715, where he remained until 1723 equals early history equals, in chapter 4 of Gulliver's Travels, Gulliver alludes to his plans to publish a treatise on the empire of Lilliput. In 1728, John Arbuthnot wrote an account of the state of learning in the empire of Lilliput, together with the history and character of Bullam the emperor's library keeper. This purported to be transcribed from Gulliver's description. Arbuthnot used this work to satirize Richard Bentley, master of Trinity College. Cambridge but also described the early history of Lilliput and Blefuscule. At one time, Blefuscule was a commonwealth and had its own language and an extensive literature. Lilliput, meanwhile, was divided among several petty kingdoms. The first emperor of Blefuscule attacked and subdued Lilliput, but later the Lilliputians won their independence and set up their own emperor. Equals later history equals Winterfell's sequel children's chapter book Castaways in Lilliput provides further details of Lilliputian history. The Emperor of Gulliver's time, Mully Oligu, is said to have reigned 1657 a Euro 1746. His descendant, 
Alice, is the reigning queen in the 1950s when three Australian children visit the island. The monetary system has apparently also been changed, the sprug of Swift's novel replaced by the ones, equal to 10 dimmelings or 100 beams. Technology has kept pace with the outside world, so the Lilliputians of trains, automobiles, helicopters, telephones, and telegraphs. Equals flag of Lilliput equals, Winterfell describes the flag of Lilliput as having blue and white stripes with a golden crown on a red field. These symbols are also painted on the police helicopters. Equals language equals, Swift presents a number of Lilliputian words and phrases. Arbuthnot explains further that Bluffer School originally had its own language and an extensive literature, but during the period when it occupied Lilliput, the Bluffer language was much altered by contact with Lilliputian. Bluffer remained an old language of scholarship. In T.H. White's sequel, Mistress Masham's Repose, the protagonist Maria studies the Lilliputian language from a book owned by her professor friend. This is a rare copy of Gulliver's 1735 treatise, a general description of the empire of Lilliput, from its first direction, through a long series of princes, with a particular account of their wars and politics, laws, learning, and religion, their plants and animals, their peculiar manners and customs, with other matters very curious and useful, to which is added a brief vocabulary of their language, with its English correspondences. In Winterfell's sequel, English has become the official language, due to a decision of the Council of the Island in 1751. Other references Lilliput is reputedly named after the real area of Lilliput on the shores of Loch Ennell near Dysart, just a few miles from Malinga, in County Westmeath, Ireland. Swift was a regular visitor to the Rochefort family at Gaulstown House. It is said that it was when Dean Swift looked across the expanse of Loch Ennell one day and saw the tiny human figures on the opposite shore of the lake that he conceived the idea of the Lilliputians featured in Gulliver's Travels. There is also an early Christian association a Euro St. Patrick a Euro unregistered trademark s sister, Lupita, is known to the Lilliput area, which may recall her name. In fact, the town and known from ancient times as Neil was renamed Lilliput or Lilliput shortly after the publication of Gulliver's Travels in honor of Swift's association with the area. Lilliput House has stood in the locality since the 18th century. Lilliput and Bluffer School were the names used for Britain and France, respectively, in a series of semi-fictional transcripts of debates in the British Parliament. This series was written by William Guthrie, Samuel Johnson, and John Hawkesworth and was printed in Edward Cave's periodical The Gentleman's Magazine from 1738 to 1746. The word Lilliputian has become an adjective meaning very small in size, or petty or trivial. When used as a noun, it means either a tiny person, or a person with a narrow outlook, who minds the petty and trivial things. It is the name of the small beings in Gravity Falls, a show by Alex Hirsch, in the Gravity Falls Royal Discount Putt Hut. The use of the terms Big Endian, and Little Endian in the story is the source of the computing term Endianness. Neil Amahendra, the love interest in Sir Salman Rushdie's novel Fury, is an Indo-Lily, a member of the Indian diaspora from the politically unstable country of Lilliput and Bluffer School. Several craters on Mars moon Phobos are named after Lilliputians. Perhaps inspired by Johannes Kepler, Swift's satire Gulliver's Travels refers to two moons in Part 3. Chapter 3, in which the astronomers of Laputa are described as having discovered two satellites of Mars orbiting at distances of 3 and 5 Martian diameters, and periods of 10 and 21.5 hours, respectively. Lilliput is mentioned throughout the 2005 Mel Plakit trilogy of children's novels by Andrew Dalton. Taking much of their initial inspiration from T. H. White's, Mistress Masham's Repose, the books describe the adventures of a large colony of Lilliputians living secretly in the enormous and mysterious grounds of an English country house. Their longed-for return to their ancestral homeland is one of the major themes of the stories. See also, The Borrowers, Brobdingnick, H-O-U-Y-H-N-H-N-M, Struvebrug, Yahoo. References Manguel, Alberto. Gianni Gadalupi. Lilliput. The Dictionary of Imaginary Places. San Diego, 
Harcourt pages 367 a Euro 370. ISBN 0 15 600872 6. CS1 Maintenance, Extra Text, 